Hello, guys. Can you, can you hear me? I want to know if you can hear me. It's raining here, so I really don't know if you guys can hear me. Can you continue, guys? No, it's clear. Can you listen to me or not? Um. What about now? Can you listen to me? Oh, if you guys can listen to me, just let me know, please, because um, I mean, it's raining here a lot, so I really don't know if you can listen to me. Or is there, or do you listen to the background noise? Yes, teacher. Sorry. Um, uh, I, I, I mean, it's, I'm sorry for that because it's raining here, as I was saying before, but I really don't know if you all can listen to me or do you listen to any kind of interference or background noise? A little interference. I understand. What about now? But is it clear or is it like cutting off or 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 what's what how? Like try to tell me because I mean I want to I want to understand or I want to know if you're listening to me, because as I told you before, it's raining here and it's raining a lot. So I mean there's kind of interference in the background. So I really don't know if if there's something going on because I want you to listen to me clearly. So that's why I'm asking you. I hear you, teacher. Okay, great. So um, welcome guys once again to another class. Today we're going to try to learn something different, something new. And um, I mean, I'm really sorry because I mean, I know it's raining in different parts of El Salvador and sometimes when it rains, you know, the connection or internet doesn't work that well. So I'm having that issue right now. In case you do not listen to me clear, please let me know through the chat because it's been a little bit difficult right now to try to, to try to know if you're listening or not. But we're going to try to continue with that. So once again, if at any point of the meeting, you do not listen to me, please let me know. I would appreciate that, okay? And uh, well, so as usual, I am going to ask you questions regarding to the last topic. And yesterday we saw something about adjectives, right? Adjectives of appearance. So I am going to ask you some questions regarding to that. And uh, we're going to see if you were able to understand or if we still have uh, something else to reinforce, okay? So uh, let me ask you a question. So first of all, um, I'm, I know that yesterday we saw a lot of adjectives so for you to, uh, to understand them all or, or to remember them all, I know it's going to be a little bit difficult, but we are going to try to check with uh, the most common adjectives that we have. So uh, the first question that I'm going to ask you is about 
how do we say, uh, let me see. How do we say, uh, Delgado. How do we say that? In English, how do we say delgado? Can someone tell? Slim. Skinny? Slim. Thin. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's that's some of the ways that we that we have uh, to say. So another question to you guys. What is the best way when you don't want to, to make someone feel offended about the adjective? that you use what is the adjective that we can use instead of saying thing what is another adjective that i can use for that do you remember there is interference There's, please let me know like in the chat i mean it's been a little bit it's it's like there it's raining us that and sometimes I cannot listen to you. So if you cannot listen to me clear, please let me know through the chat so I will read your message and I will try to speak a little bit louder. Okay. Let me try to check. Um, Lot. Let me see. Well, so it's probably the internet connection, guys. So uh, please raise your hand or uh, give any reaction if you can listen to me clear. If you cannot, or is there any interference? Please react or tell me. I just got Maximo and Elizabeth saying that they can listen to some sort of interference about the other ones. Can you listen to me or not? Same thing, okay. What about the other ones? Sonia, Rosemary, Claudia, can you listen to me? Or is there interference for you too? Okay, a little. All right, so um, let me see what I can do here with the, with the internet connection. That's probably what is, what is not, is not working. See. In one moment, I'll be right back, okay? Okay, what about now? It's still the same thing? Yes, mine is clear. Uh, yours is clear. So I don't know what's going on, guys. So sorry about it. But I mean, it's raining probably in another parts of El Salvador too. Oh. Okay, so it's probably, well, I really don't know. And, uh, well, we're going to try, we're going to try to continue in this way. Once again, if you listen to some kind of interference, please let me know, okay? Please. Uh, that's the only thing that I'm going to ask you. If you do not listen to me, let me know. So I will try to figure something out here, okay? So as I was, as I was saying before, before, okay, Carlos is having the same situation, so I really don't know what's going on. Um, escucho igual, so I don't know. ¿Qué hay de los demás? Do you still listen to me the same way? Siempre me escuchan de la misma forma.
Teacher, yo le alcancé a escuchar que mencionaba usted que podía intentarlo ahorita en lo que se pudiera y que si hubiera problemas usted podía repetirlo. Entonces, por mí, intentemos a ver hasta dónde llegamos. Yes, because I mean, it's 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 raining here and it's raining a lot. So I can listen to you clear. Si los escucho a los demás, eh, claro. Pero no sé si ustedes me escuchan a mí claro, porque yo los veo a ustedes claramente y los escucho claramente when you talk. So, sí, you know. Hoy se escucha mejor. Hoy se escucha okay. bien. Tito. Okay, it's, it's because it's raining and I mean, the roof doesn't help it that much. So we're going to try to, yes. Eh, lo que pasa es que cuando usted habla se oye un, un zumbido y de repente también se queda que no se le oye la voz. Really? Mm. Okay, let me try to, try to verify with the speakers. So, let me see. Okay. Okay, uh, right now it says that it's working. So we're going to try to continue in that way. If it doesn't work, please let me know. So I will try to get in contact with technical support and we're try, uh, We're going to try to see what we can do. Because I mean, when it rains, the ear doesn't want to work. So that's why it's kind of difficult. Uh, but well, I was saying before that I'm going to ask you some questions regarding to the topic that we saw yesterday. So yesterday, we saw a lot of uh, adjectives. So today, I was going to ask you about some, some adjectives to verify if you understood some of them. So if I say something like, uh, let me see. Uh, self-assured. If I say self-assured, do you guys remember what self-assured is? Pequeño, corto. Seguro de sí mismo. Seguro de sí mismo. Self-assured. Okay. Sorry. No, it's fine. If I say something like uh, uh, glamorous, what's that? Glamorous, glamorous. What is that? Glamoroso. Okay. What about? Let me see. Gorgeous. gorgeous. What is that? Hermosa. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So we're going to move on. To today's class because we I mean time is running we have already 13 minutes so we're going to move on to today's topic this topic is going to be about particles and in this part we are going to understand how some frisal verbs work have you ever heard about frisal verb or do you have any idea about what a frisal verb is? Or does anyone know what a frisal verb is? No? I can't hear. What, what did you say? I can't hear. You can't. So I, I'm not understanding what she's saying. Can you repeat, please? Uh, so I was I was saying that if you if that any one of you knows what a frisal verb is, do you have any idea about what frisal verb? No? No. Let, let me let me write it down probably. I don't know. Fry silver. For example, for example, get up. Get up. Yeah, that's one fry silver. Fry silver, guys, or verbos frasales, some verbos 
unidos con un particle. Sí, que al unirlos cambian su sentido y tienen diferente significado. Those are frisal birds. So today we are going to try to understand how to use or how to form frisal birds because it is very important that you know how to use them. So first of all, we are going to try to have a little definition about added particles, I'm sorry. So I would like to have someone to help me reading the part or the definition that we have there. Will someone would like to help me? Me teacher. Go ahead, please. Are functions words that express grammatical relationship with other words? Functions words are words that perform definite grammatical fu functions but that lack definite lexical meaning. Lexical meaning. So basically, guys, particles are just small words or function words that we are going to put together with other words. So when we put these two words together, the meaning of that changes and they create. It's like you create a new word. So when you put a verb and when you put a particle there, you create automatically a verb or something different. So these, these uh, particles are going to help you to like create new words that are going to be or to sound, they will make you sound as a native speaker of the language, okay? So once you know how to use them all, you will, uh, you will sound more native when you speak the language. So we're going to go to some rules and we are going to have a definition of what a frisal verb is. So I would like, uh, Maximo, I don't know if you can help me reading this part. The first grammatical construction in the English language that contains a P or that function as a particle is the frasal verb. Frasal verbs consist of a verb followed by one or more P words. The P word of a frasal verb functions as a particle. Okay. An example of frasal verb include the following. Okay, so as I was saying before, we have the frisal verbs and the frisal verbs, as it says there, is it is a grammatical construction that contains particles. So which are the particles here? For example, we have some frisal verbs here. The verb, what, what is the meaning of the verb call? Llamar. 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 So, if I add the particle of, ya significa llamar. So, if I say call of, este es el particle. Particle is this one, of. If we put those words together, we create a new word, and now it's not going to mean llamar. When we put these two things together, this frisal verb will mean cancel. So you can see when you add a particle to any of the verbs, the meaning changes. So we have another one here, lay in on. When you use this, here we have two particles. We have in and we have on. When we say lay in on, when we put those three words, together, they are going to mean criticize. You see, criticize. So what I want you to understand, guys, is that when we use particles in some words, those particles are just small words that are going to help to create a new word 
and to make you sound when you speak to make you sound more native. Why? Because native speakers of the language, they love using phrasal verbs for the majority of, for most of the time when they are speaking, most of the time they use phrasal verbs. Do you guys have any questions so far or something that you would like me to repeat again? So I don't know if you are listening to me or not, because you haven't said anything. So are we clear right now, or do you want me to tell you something else? For the moment, all clear. Perfect. Now, uh, we are going to finish reading these examples, because uh, probably in the future, or if you read a book, or if you go to the internet, or if you speak with a native speaker of the language, you will not even that they will always use these phrasal verbs. So we're going to go with, by each one of them, we have call off, which will mean cancel, lay in on, which will mean criticize, let up, it will mean diminish, uh, diminish, sorry, or listen. If you say pass on, it's like if you're saying to transmit, if you say, rule out, it's like eliminate. And if you say throw up, it's like vomit, vomiting. So most of the time, or how do Americans or how native speakers of the language know that you are not a native speaker? How do they know? Very easy, because let's imagine you are talking with an American or someone who is native speaker of the language and you want to say vomitar. Usually, cualquier persona diría, okay, vomitar, we say vomit, right? And that's, that's fine. I mean, that's also a word in English, vomit. But if you want to sound more native or like you know already English, the word that you can say is like, instead of saying vomit, you can say throw up because they usually say that word. So basically, once again, phrasal verbs are always going to help us to make things shorter and also to sound like a native speaker of the language. So let's move on to the next part and let's see what we have. We're still on the part of the phrasal verbs and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of parts that we need to understand about the usage of phrasal verbs and how we so. For example, in the first part, it says that phrasal verbs are usually two word phrase consisting of verb plus adverb, verb plus preposition, verb plus adverb plus preposition. And we have a, like, it can have a literal meaning easy to understand, or it can also have an idiomatic meaning. So uh, we have an example here, which is very, very common. If you say give up, what do you guys understand by the phrasal verb give up? What's that? Rendirse? Rendirse, not really. Does anyone know what's the meaning of give up? Give up. Stop doing. I'm sorry? Abandonar. Darse por vencido. That's give up. Have you ever heard, una vez han escuchado que alguien le dice, never give up. So what they try to say is nunca darse por vencido. So when we have give up, that means stop doing. I mean, stop doing or something is very different from give. So um, we really need to understand these guys. I mean, every single time that we use phrasal verbs there, there's a variety. There's a lot of phrasal verbs, which sometimes it is difficult to use them all because we are not natives. 
But what we have to do is that we, we have to try to learn or to memorize the phrasal verbs that are more common or commonly used in the English environment. So we're going to uh, have, we're going to understand that four basic types of phrasal verbs. We are going to go one by one and we are going to try to understand how to use them. And we are going to have some examples too, which are going to help us to understand how to use or how phrasal verbs are formed. So on the first part, we have verb plus particle. We have one example here that it says, look out, look out. So what is the particle in that one? Obviously, the particle is going to be the word out. So when we put them together, the meaning of that is be careful with someone. Okay. Uh, let's, let's see what we have on number two, because it's really uh, it's really important that you know that all different types. So at the end, you will understand how to use them. So, but I have a question for you. Are you guys following me? Are you guys understanding what I'm saying right now? Are you guys understanding the topic? Or is there something that you are not understanding? Remember, if you have questions, ask the questions right now so you don't have any doubt at the end of the topic. No? So good. Am I talking to myself today? Are you there, guys? Yes, teacher, but I listen with interference. So, okay, I, I, as, as, as I told you at the beginning of the class, if you are listening in interference, please let me know, because, I mean, I really don't know, because when you speak to me, I can listen to you, like, perfectly, but I really don't know when I speak to you that if you listen in the same way that I'm listening to you. So uh, please, next time, if you are listening to me in the interference or any sort of background noise, let me know so I will try to figure things out here, okay? So please let me know. So uh, let me see, I would, like you, I would like to have your participation, Vilma. Would you like to help me reading the part number two? Yes, it's phrasal, phrasal verb with an object either after the particle or between the verb and particle. Okay. Here we have two ways that we can create or make or how phrasal verbs are going to work. The first, as you can see here, we have the verb plus object. ¿Cuáles son los object, guys? Un objeto o un object puede ser cualquier cosa. Se fijan acá, esto significa que este tipo de phrasal verbs, this type of phrasal verbs, can be separated. Se pueden separar. ¿Sí? ¿Cuál es el phrasal verb? I have throw. Tengo el objeto que es rubbish. What meaning of rubbish? Basura. Basura. So if we say, I'll throw the rubbish away. ¿Cuál es el particle there? Which one is the particle there? Away. Away. So as we can see here, on the, it's on the 2A, as it says verb, plus the object, plus the particle. When I say object, I can refer to anything, like some of the things that we have at home, uh, equipment, I can refer to anything, but I can also refer to object pronouns. How 
ever heard, ¿alguna vez han escuchado los object pronouns o objetos pronombres? Me. Me. Them. Them. Them, ya. Yeah. Him. Her. It. Todos estos son object pronouns. So, cuando dice object, se refiere a todo cualquier objeto que tenemos a nuestro alrededor. And also, we can refer to object pronouns. También podemos utilizar el object pronoun. ¿Con qué object pronoun yo podría omitir la palabra the rubbish here? ¿Qué objeto pronombre podría omitir esa palabra? The rubbish. It. It. So, en lugar de decir the rubbish, yo podría decir... I'll throw it away. See? Let me write it down just to make sure that you are understanding. Like, I'll, I'll throw, throw it away. So I could say something like that. I'll throw it away. ¿Qué es lo que está haciendo ese object pronoun there? Ese it. Uh, what about the other ones? Los demás si me están escuchando? You guys listening? Yes. Yes. Cortado. Yes, teacher. So I don't know what's going on. Eh, el, el, la situación es que aparentemente la, la aplicación está fallando mientras unos escuchan cortado, otros escuchan bien, de ahí otros no escuchan nada. So uh, I don't know what's going on. Probablemente sea la aplicación la que está fallando. Uh, because we're having the same situation with different groups. Todos los grupos están teniendo casi que la misma situación. So we are going to try to see or we are going to try to figure this out. Because I mean, this is a situation from the app. It's not, a, sometimes it's the internet, but some other times it's about the app. But um, I want to know if we understood or if you guys understood, si entendimos, 2A, si entendimos la primera, 2A. Did you guys understood si entendimos cómo se usa? Yes, teacher. Cool. So now let's go to 2B. In the 2B part, as it says, we can have a verb plus particle plus the object. ¿Qué es lo que pasa aquí? Revertimos y hacemos al revés la cosa. Si se fijan. So the object que estaba aquí en medio pasa al final. What does it mean? ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Que este tipo de phrasal verbs pueden ser separados. There's some others that we cannot separate them, but we are going to see that later on. This part right now are, is about phrasal verbs that can be separated and some others that cannot be separated but we are going to see that later on. So as you can see here in 2B, we have the same sentence. We have, I throw away the rubbish. So, algunos se preguntarán, entonces, ¿cuál es la forma correcta? In this case, or this type of phrasal verbs, so este tipo de phrasal verbs, se pueden de las dos formas. So you can say, I'll throw the rubbish away, or you can say, I'll throw away the rubbish. So both of them are going to be correct. Also, do you have any idea what throw away means? ¿Alguien tiene alguna idea del significado de throw away? Yes, it's true. What's, what's the meaning of throw away? Tirar lejos. Tirar lejos o tirar. Tirar something, like throw something away, like throw a ball. Uh, it significa tirar. So when we put those two words together, that will be the meaning of that. So does any one of you know, alguien de ustedes sabe, what's the meaning of the phrasal verb take off? Dejar. 
Not really, es quitar. Quitar. For example, if someone tells you take your shirt off. Si alguien le dice take your shirt off, es quítate la camisa. Take your shirt off. We have example here that says take your shoes off. Take your shoes off. Entonces le está diciendo quítese los zapatos. Take your shoes off. Or we can say take off your shoes. So we can have both situations and both of them are going to be correct. Now, as you can see here, or as I was saying before, como estaba diciéndoles antes, cuando yo digo object, me refiero a object pronoun. Y aquí tenemos los mismos ejemplos. Take them off. ¿Qué está omitiendo este them ahí? What's the word that we are omitting in that part? The shoes, teacher. The shoes. We're, we're trying to omit the shoes. So instead of saying your take your shoes off, we say take them off because we are omitting the word shoes. But it's something very important. Cuando utilizamos los object pronouns, ya no podemos utilizar la forma 2B. ¿Sí? Quiere decir que yo ya no puedo decir I'll throw away it. ¿Sí? Solo lo puedo usar de la forma 2A. Or I cannot say take off them. That's not possible. So that's going to happen. Eso va a pasar only with object pronouns. With another object that is not an object pronoun, you will be able to use the two forms, okay? Are we understanding? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so why so, so, and no, yes, Vilma? Is there any question? No, um, in the context, when you change in this note. Oh, uh -huh. in this note, yes. Mm -hmm. I lose. <laughs> you got lost. Okay, no, no problem. Let me try to explain you like, so you can understand like more. When, when we use object pronouns, cuando usamos objetos pronombres, no vamos a poder utilizar la forma 2B. Never. ¿Por qué? Porque el objeto pronombre no nos permite, eh, fonéticamente hablando, no es permitido. O sea, yo, si yo digo, I'll throw away it, gramaticalmente y fonéticamente no se escucha bien. Y gramaticalmente estaría incorrecto. Entonces, every single time, so, or when you, cuando utilizamos an object pronoun, siempre va a tener que ser como la forma 2A, solo con object pronouns. Si yo estoy utilizando, or I'm saying, o otro objeto que no sea un object pronoun, voy a poder utilizar las dos formas. Pero solo con object pronouns, la única forma que yo tengo es... La forma 2A. Okay, teacher, thank you. Okay, very good. Now let's move on to another part. Ahora vamos a los Freisel verb de third part. We have verb, particle, and object. So we're going to see some examples here. We have she takes after her mother. Why it's very important, es muy importante que entendamos que este tipo de verbos, the phrasal verbs and particles are inseparable. Como dice aquí, particle is inseparable. Significa que yo nunca, never ever, will separate them. Because that will be incorrect. So we have the example here. She takes after her mother. I will never ever be allowed to say she takes her mother after. Why? Because if I say so, automatically I will change drastically the meaning of, of the Freisalberg. It will not longer be a Freisalberg. 
ya no va a ser tomado como un phrasal verb and it will mean something different. I don't know if you are following me, follow me what I'm trying to say. Yes, teacher. Perfect. Yes. So does any one of you have any idea about what, about the meaning of the phrasal verb take after? Does any one of you know or have any idea of, about the meaning of take after? No? No, teacher. Take after is a phrasal verb significa cuidar. She takes after her mother. So when you say something like that, cuando dicen algo como eso es, ella cuida su madre. She takes after her mother. Now, my question for you is, why am I adding a letter S? ¿Por qué agrego una letra S ahí? Why? Why is that? Because it's the third person. Because we're talking about the third person. So remember, these type of phrasal verbs with the particles are inseparable. Inseparable. Keep that in mind. So we have another example, which I would like to have Sonia to help me reading this part. Looking after a baby is hard work. Mm -hmm. Okay, does any one of you have any idea about the meaning of look after? Does any one of you have any idea about the meaning? No? Are you listening to me? Yes, teacher. Cuidar, cuidar al bebé. Also, this one, this one look after, it's a synonym, a, a synonym, I'm sorry. Es un sinónimo de take after, que significa que ambos tienen el mismo significado o significado similar. So when I say looking after a baby is a hard work, it means cuidar de un bebé es trabajo difícil. So as you can see, take after and looking or look after, both of them are synonyms, which it means lo que significa que el particle after, cuando está con un verbo, will always be inseparable, okay? Always, when we have the particle after. Is there question so far guys does any one of you have any questions till now no no okay vamos a ver en el examen de mañana verdad a ver si se acuerdan de los fries alberts so <laughs> Okay, so the Frisal verbs part number four, I would like to have Rosemary. Would you like to help me, Rosemary, reading the part number four? Frisal verbs with three parts. Verbs plus particle plus preposition. Preposition. In this, preposition. In this case, the verb cannot be separate from the other parts. Okay, leave it there. This is something very important. Cuando tenemos otros tipos de phrasal verbs que contienen tres palabras o tres partes. Verb, particle, and preposition. Y preposición. So, these three, estas tres palabras nunca, never, ever, will be able to separate them, never. Because if you separate them, si usted las separa, se pierde todo el contexto y entonces ya no es un phrasal verb, okay? So, casi siempre, what I need you to remember is that almost always, when you have a phrasal verb with three parts, 
Never ever we can separate them. Never. Casi siempre. Para la mayoría de los que tienen tres. Okay. So let's see. Let's let's have a look. So we have verb, particle, preposition, plus object. We can have so. So um, Maximo, help me reading the example if you don't mind. I am looking forward to the weekend. You I am lo oh. looking. I'm sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I am looking forward to the weekend. Mm -hmm. You go now. I I'll catch up with you later. Mm -hmm. Going back on promises is not a good. Okay, so we have the first example that says, I'm looking forward to the weekend. Estoy seguro que más de alguna vez han escuchado un video o algo de alguien que dice looking forward to. That's, that's pretty obvious. Like most of Americans love using these phrasal verbs. La mayoría de americanos utilizan ese phrasal verb a lot. Looking forward to. I'm looking forward to. Does any one of you have any idea about the meaning of look forward to? No? Okay, when we say look forward to is esperar con ansias. So if someone tells you, I'm looking forward to the weekend, Estoy esperando con ansias el fin de semana. Okay, look forward to. I can never, so, you see, when you listen to that, cuando escuchamos a eso, eh, when you use phrasal verbs, cuando ustedes utilizan phrasal verbs, los hace sonar más nativos, ¿sí? That's the reason why, esa es la, la razón por la que es necesario aprenderse los phrasal verbs, because they make you sound native. Si alguna persona nativa del idioma lo escucha hablando con phrasal verbs, nunca se darían cuenta que usted está aprendiendo inglés. ¿Por qué? Porque cuando nosotros aprendemos inglés, tendemos o tenemos la tendencia a traducir literalmente, lo que, sin, lo que no significa que esté malo, porque hay veces es, it's fine. Pero si usted utiliza phrasal verbs que significan lo mismo, Eso lo hace parecer a usted un nativo, ¿sí? So that's why it's very important that we know how to use phrasal verbs so that they make you sound more like native speaker of the language, even though you are not a native speaker of the language. You're just someone who is learning English. So let's go to example number two. It says, you go now. I'll catch up with you late. Do you guys know what's the meaning of the phrasal verb catch up with? No, teacher. No? Anyway. No, teacher. No, okay, so when we say, I'm sorry, were you saying something? Como decir, nos vemos más tarde. No reunimos más tarde. That's what, that's, no re, reunirse. That's what that's the meaning of catch up with. Mm -hmm. Fijan, las tres palabritas por sí solas no tendrían sentido. Porque si yo digo catch, ¿qué es catch? Atrapar. Atrapar. Si yo digo up, ¿qué es up? Arriba. 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 Y si yo Arriba. digo with, ¿qué es with? Con. 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 Entonces, si yo tradujera las tres palabritas, atrapar arriba con. Doesn't make sense, right? No tiene sentido. Pero como son phrasal verbs unidos con particles, al unirse los tres, significan una sola cosa. Okay, so that's why it's like, like a different level of, of English. So when, you, when someone tell you, I'll catch up with you late, or I'll catch up with you later, or nos reunimos después, so... Remember, see, ¿sí? it's, it's important que a, empecemos a utilizar esos phrasal verbs para empezar a sonar un poquito más nativos, right? It's like, oh, okay. 
Porque como diríamos en simples palabras, nos reunimos luego. How would you say that? ¿Cómo lo dirían ustedes? Like trying to translate that from Spanish to English. How would you say that? Maybe I see you later. Maybe see you later, like no vemos después. O, o it's like uh, we can meet later. Nos podemos reunir porque el, ver, el verbo meet es reunirse o encontrar o conocer. So we can say I'll meet you later. So when you say that, no significa que esté malo because it's I mean someone is going to understand you. But if you say I catch up with you late, it's like, oh wow, he's native of the language, even though you're not. So let's go to number three, which is going back on promises. It's not a good habit. Does any one of you have any idea about the phrase verb go back on? Retroceder. Retractarse. 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 Yeah, retractarse. So go back on. Retra back on promises is not a good habit. Retractarse de las promesas no es un buen acto. So you, as you can see, it's, it's a little bit different for us. Frisal verbs It's not something that we usually use when we speak. But it's very important that we know how to use them, okay? So is there any questions so far? Una pregunta? Does any one of you have any questions so far or are we clear? Si estamos claros para el examen de mañana. No, no, you're not clear then. Okay, that was funny. That was so funny. So, well, that's, if there's no question, I'm... That no clear. question. We need, we, need, we need more practice. We need to study more the phrasal verbs. Actually, we don't have any practice or study day by day. I know. We'll forget all of this class. Yeah, I know. I know. That's completely understandable. And I do understand what you say, Juan, because in the outside world, like in El Salvador, every single day we are speaking Spanish. If you go to the store, usted no va a la tienda a decirle a alguien, vea, oh, deme tres dólares de eggs, deme two, two dollars of cheese. <laughs> no, right? Because the person is not going to understand what you're saying because we speak Spanish in El Salvador. So I understand that if you are working at, at work, you speak Spanish, so you don't practice that much. So that's why this hour is very important that when we have practices, try to speak in English as much as you can. Because if you are here in this hour speaking Spanish, I mean, I mean, you speak Spanish the whole day, and this is just one hour where you are going to speak English. So take advantage of that and try to practice in this hour as much as we can when we go to the practices. Uh, but that's understandable, Juan. I do get your point. So let's go to this part, which it says, particles in quasi-modal verbs. I will need three people, tres personas. The first person till the first period, hasta el primer punto. The second person till number two, hasta el punto numero dos. And the last person will help me with the last part. Volunteer. Voluntarios. Okay. Arnoldo, thank you very much, Arnoldo. So help me till here. Okay. Practice in question model verbs. The second grammatic, grammatical, grammatical, construction, grammatical construction in the English in English language that contain contains okay that contains um yeah a, a p that's just the letter p. P. Ah, pensé que faltaba algo ahí. no okay a p word that fu fu function 
functions as functions as body particle is the quasi modal verb thank you very much arnoldo now damaris tell me thank you, still here okay teacher the modal verb a term that encompass both full modal verbs and quasi modal verbs is a distinct auxiliary verb form of the English language that differs from prototypical verbs in grammatical form and grammatical function. That was a really good pronunciation, Damaris. Let me tell you so. As, that was really good. So, um, well, guys, as you can see here, it talks about quasi-modal verbs. What's that? ¿Alguien sabe cuáles son los modal verbs? ¿O se recuerdan de los modal verbs? Ya no se recuerdan. No? Nobody? Nadie? ¿Alguien recuerda should, would, might, may? No? Could no no you don't remember no. you I didn't don't remember on basic no. three on module number three you didn't see it or you don't remember actually not teacher well probably you don't remember so the model verbs los verbos modales Son aquellos que utilizamos como would, cuando decimos I would like, me gustaría, I could, podría, or might, may, will, will, es tomado como parte de, de model verbs, should, también, and sure. to, yes. We didn't, see. You didn't on module number three? No, no teacher. You didn't. Well, so probably you will see it. We're in module number two, probably next module. I'm, I'm not sure about it. Probably next module. But I mean, we're having just an introduction about models. And uh, when you see models, you will completely understand how to use them all. Models are not difficult to use because we use them every single time. Cuando usted dice, puedo ir al baño. De forma, uh, like, permission teacher. How do we say so? ¿Cuál es la pregunta que hacemos? ¿Puedo ir al baño? Could I? Could May I, I go to the bathroom? Could we, I? Ha we have different things. Si yo digo, may I go to the, to the bathroom? Uh, ahí tenemos una situación también. I don't know if they told you, si alguien ya les dijo, La diferencia entre bathroom and restroom. Bathroom is rest is public. Uh, well, yes, it's it's pretty much so. So when we say cuando decimos bathroom, nos referimos a que tiene ducha y tiene baño. Este es un bathroom. Si usted solo va al puro lugar donde solo está la taza del baño, a eso le llamamos restroom, ¿sí? Si usted va a su casa afuera, usted no va a decir que I go to the bathroom, a no ser que en su casa usted tenga baño y ducha en el mismo puesto. Entonces ahí sí puede decir, ok, may I go to the bathroom, pero si usted va a otro lugar donde solo está la taza, entonces decimos, may I go to the restroom? So that's the difference. Esa es la diferencia. ¿Sí? We have to understand that. Tenemos que aprender eso. Porque si usted va a un restaurante y usted dice, may I go to the bathroom? Entonces la otra persona le va a entender es que usted probablemente se va a ir a tomar una ducha, va a hacer sus necesidades y hasta después va a volver. So, so it doesn't make sense, right? So we say, may I go or may I go to the restroom? See, ¿Sí? al baño, solo al baño, no a tomarse una ducha. 
have to understand that. It's possible. Okay. I mean, I mean, it's possible. It, it, will, it will depend. <laughs> it will depend on the context. See, ¿sí? dependerá. In El Salvador, yes. Yeah, I mean, in El Salvador, of course. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the restroom uh, or bathroom. It's that's possible in El Salvador. But uh, I mean, it's very important that we understand the differences, so we don't make any mistake when we're talking with uh, with an American or with a native speaker of the language. So going, Thank you, uh, going with uh, these quasi-modal verbs, tenemos estos tres que son bien utilizados. Bueno, o tú, no mucho, o tú, que es como decir should, debería. Pero este o tú es lenguaje antiguo. Ya no es utilizado en el lenguaje hablado eh, en, en, en el idioma inglés actual. Sí, las personas de edad... Eh, nativas del idioma eh, siempre utilizan o tú o las personas de la realeza someone like uh, Queen Isabel they usually use words como o tú para referirse a should, debería so or probably in books or readings or things like that si yo digo had better had better is like Deberías mejor o deberías mejor haber hecho tal cosa. For example, if I tell you, you had better study for the exam. Deberías haber estudiado para el examen. You had better study for the exam. And used to, does any one of you have any idea? Si tienen una idea de qué significa used to. No, okay, it means solía. Si yo digo, yeah. so, yes. So, I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't, I cannot. Do, do you, what? Well, I don't know if you were saying something, but I was saying that used to mean significa solía. And we use it when, cuando decimos algo como yo solía jugar cuando estaba chiquito. It's like, I used to play uh, Mika or I used to play La Barita de Listón when I, was, uh, when I was a child. Things like that. Solía. Used to. So that's pretty much the meaning of that. So, well, actually, guys, that's going to be all for today. We didn't feel one hour. So, la la hora, verdad? So be ready for tomorrow because we're having evaluation, okay? Exam for tomorrow. Surprise. Okay. <laughs> okay. So see you guys tomorrow. No. And if you have any question for tomorrow, so just let me know or something that you would like me to help you about platforms. Remember that we have the WhatsApp group, okay? So that's gonna be all for today, guys. Thank you so much for being on the class and see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. tomorrow. Bye. Bye.